Welcome back to another Thrift Shop album review. This week's group is led by none other than Todd Thomas, also known as Speech. He's been creating an alternative, Afrocentric, and faith-centered approach to rap music since the late 1980s. Teaming up in 88 with Timothy Barnwell, also known as Headliner, and notably Baba OJ, sort of a spiritual leader and soul of the group. They, of course, with many other talented musicians and singers and family members, extended family members, and some super choice sampling, they've crafted a super conscientious and empowering album that I think is pretty timeless. They've named it after the amount of time it took them to actually sign an album deal. It's titled Three Years, Five Months, and Two Days. And here it is. This is Arrested Development's debut album through Chrysalis and EMI Records, released in 1992. These guys created a critically acclaimed debut, getting two Grammys, I believe, for this project and going multi-platinum. This album's been credited with the popularization of Southern hip-hop. The impact of their spiritual, historically rooted, and reflective rapping approach has, however, not been so appropriated and really wasn't as long-lasting as they could have hoped for. If, like me, you were born just after the release of this album, you might actually be thinking of the TV show Arrested Development when you hear the name. Hence, I'm wearing a hat that says Job on it. And, of course, the As Seen on TV, not the band. And if you do, you might be interested to know that they sued Fox in 2003, and there's, I believe, four or five references to the suit in the TV show itself. This lane of Arrested Development also had a hiatus period, but they've been back together since 2000, I believe, and they've continued to release music up until as recently as last year, 2020, with Speech remaining the continuous frontman throughout. That's, however, far too much foreshadowing. I'm here to get into this album, who's pretty banging, if you ask me, and its journey to my eardrums took nearly 30 years. Let's start it off with the hype, tight little intro titled Man's Final Frontier. Starts you out with Space is a man's final frontier. Man's final frontier is the soul. Got it by da, 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 and it just goes off and it's tight and it's firing up and you're getting into it and you pop pop pop. It excites me, it grabs me and grooves me on to the true opening number, Mama's Always on Stage. The sample they use here reminds me a lot of the Dream Machine by Sukia. It's an obscure reference to the very first album I reviewed on this channel. But then it gets jazzed up and the conscientious rapping starts on a track dedicated to young, single black mothers who need a community and a bunch of support around them in order to become the powerful revolutionaries that they can be. With lines like, can't be a revolution without women, can't be a revolution without children, nurture another's minds before yours expires, it's powerful community and just like a togetherness feeling slowing down onto the Sly and the Family Stone sampled people every day. Speech tells a tale about being discriminated against by other African Americans for the colorful clothes he wears and the way he styles his hair and eventually has to fight to protect his girlfriend and his lifestyle. He's got really good flow but just not enough energy in his delivery to get past the super catchy memorable refrain that comes back up from the sly and the stone. I am everyday people. Just too catchy, and fortunately the sample is a little bit better than your song, so I'm sorry. This is a great effort, but kind of a miss. There's a short intermission where Speech introduces a number of the other Arrested Development members at the time before jumping into another Sly and the Stone sampled track that was a pretty successful single and it's probably my favorite song on the whole album. It's all about sitting down and getting to know a homeless man titled Mr. Wendell. He asks really philosophical questions like civilization, are we really civilized, and who are we to judge? All over this laid-back attitude that has a compelling little simple beat over it. Great track, 
recommend you check out this above probably the rest of them just because I'm so excited about it and jazzed up on it. Rainy Revolution is a stripped back track about spirituality and gratitude for the natural cycles of life. It's a beautiful follow-up to the energizing interlude that comes right before it titled Children Play With Earth. Really down-to-earth stuff. Rudy goodness. They continue the compounding themes with the next couple tracks. They've got Fishing for Religion followed by Give a Man a Fish, the first of which being crafted like it's their very own cathedral. Super danceable beat really engaging rapping and a catchy as hell chorus just <clears throat> boom 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 this one is a banger too the second they use mini ripper tins when it comes down to it and it treads a fine line on finding sustainable yet simultaneously fulfilling lifestyle and it pushes back against the system that seems to only enable one of those two things this tracks probably as political as they get but it's all told through a groovy enough lens that it takes a bit of the edge off. The next one is titled You and it hits you with a modernized dance hall feel but its message is kind of lost in speeches pretty impressive but all too busy rap style. Without the marital cries at the beginning or the chorus of I could be the you for you and you could be the you for me I probably would have lost the message in the convoluted nature of his just bum, 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 bum. it's impressive but it's just not I guess dynamic or not the right kind of emphasis on the right spots I'm I'm lost on what makes speeches rapping not quite hit here but I feel like he runs into a similar issue a lot of times along pretty much his entire career and that said I don't hate this or the album at all I just think that Ultimately, the majority of the audience is going to miss out on some of the denser narratives that speech presents. On to another interlude. This one's titled Eve of Reality, and it's just a simple drum, flute, and nature sound instrumental leading you into the earth, wind, and fire sampled song titled Natural. Fast rapping speech is back here, but not at the rate he was at at you, and with production that's a lot more conducive to hearing his words. It does run its course, however, and I'm ready to jump into the funky bass line on Dawn of the Dreads by the end of it. Touching back onto discrimination and the feeling of your time will come, this track also suffers from dragging on a bit, and neither the beats nor the rhymes are compelling enough to carry this one for over five minutes. The band's biggest hit single sits boldly in the second last position on the track list. Tennessee features a number of samples, one from Joe Tex, you got James Brown, and a Prince sample which he generously only demanded $100,000 payment for one time instead of co-writing credit. Dion Ferris truly shines here, along with Speech's sing-speaky rap style and a soulful chorus it made for a number one R&B and hip-hop billboard hit and a Grammy Award for Greatest Rap Performance in 1993. Not like those really ever mattered, though. They clean up the end of this album with a long, drawn-out Afrobeat song titled Washed Away. It's a cry for help from the unnatural and destructive path of desire and ego and how we're forced to naively feed into this system. With its closing cries of, We can stop being washed away, it desperately clings to the faint hope of being able to pass down and share wisdom and truth down to further generations so they can learn and find a way to make a better system, I guess. These guys were named Band of the Year by Rolling Stone in 1993 based on this album, and Spike Lee even got them to record a track for his Malcolm X biopic. They released Singa Maduni in 1994, but it didn't quite live up to the success of this album, and they would break up for a bit in 1996. Back together four years later, but without Erli... How do I pronounce this lady's name? Erli Tari, I think is her name. And then also Headliner didn't return. I found his beats on Zingala Maduni to be really not as compelling as what you find here. And on their future stuff without him. It's a decent beat. It 
feels a little generic and I think it's one of their real loose points in a lot of their albums that doesn't make them hit nearly as hard as this one did. The sampling is great here, the rapping is really different, it's conscientious, it's thoughtful, it's fluid, it's really verbose, I enjoy the heck out of it and it's a great album that I can listen to again and again and really maintain a joy for especially a certain number of tracks. The interludes are fun. Overall, just an enjoyable album experience, and it's what I look for when I'm going through records and CDs and cassettes and whatever music I can find. I'm looking for something that keeps me engaged and is interesting, is dynamic, and this thing checked a few of those boxes for sure. I do wish they could have maintained their compelling beats and I'm really not sure about their more recent material but definitely check out three years five months and two days in the life of Arrested Development. Now I've got this arbitrary but very specific goal for the duration of this channel that hopefully I'll just blast on by without remembering but we're gonna make it at least three years five months and two days in the life of one man's tracks and if you want to join me make sure you're subscribed for a weekly dose of a random album that I pick out of the ether make sure you like the video if you're this deep in it maybe click on another link over here playlist whatever's happening subscribe Woo! mama's always on stage ba -da 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 -da. give a man a fish and he'll eat for a day Teach him how to fish and he'll eat forever. Woo!